Last year, HP came out with the Reverb G1, a VR headset targeting mostly commercial customers. This year, HP has launched the Reverb G2, and it's targeting not just commercial customers, but the consumers as well. Judging from the new features and the companies that came together to work on the Reverb G2, this headset could become a top choice for consumers. As a start, Reverb G2 is the result of a collaboration between three industry leaders, HP, Valve, and Microsoft. Representatives of these three companies were at the Augmented World Expo, one of the leading events around AR and VR, which normally takes place in Santa Clara, California, but this year it took place online. One of the biggest supporters of the Reverb G2 is Alex Kipman, head of the AI and Mixed Reality Group at Microsoft. Kipman is also known as the chief creator of HoloLens and the Microsoft Kinect before that. Kickman was a guest during a special gathering organized by HP, which took place in virtual form after the event. Expo Vista TV participated to both the AWE online conference and the HP gathering. So here are some of the features of the Reverb G2 as presented by the developers. We have brand new LCD panels this year, still 2160 by 2160 resolution per eye, however, the actual pixels and panels themselves have been improved immensely. So brand new panels, they have higher contrast, higher brightness, uh, but they also have reduced persistence at the same time to give you a smoother experience when you're in VR. Uh, but one of the biggest improvements is the reduction of perceived mirror. With our first generation, uh, there was a decent amount of perceived mirror, so it looked like you were looking into another world through a pair of dirty glasses or goggles. Um, with these new panels, that perceived mirror is gone. Uh, so no longer look like you're looking through something, but rather just looking into a new world for an increase in immersiveness. A significant improvement also comes from the optics. And the Valve had a prominent role in designing these components, as the company has been making optics for quite some time. Here are the details. These optics have focused on angular resolution and having clarity to the edge. It's a big improvement year over year for us. And of course, when you're trying to get the best visual experience, you want to match up the center of the optics to the center of your eyeballs, which means we have to have mechanical IPD adjustment. So we've had mechanical IPD adjustment 60 to 68 millimeters to make sure that a user can put it on and match up the center of those optics, the sweet spot to wherever your eyes are. What users will appreciate the most, however, is having two extra cameras on the headset for a total of four, instead of the two only in the Reverb G1. The extra cameras allow full arm motion and, therefore, a much better tracking. Previously, I always have to keep my hands in front of me with the two camera tracking, so throwing things like a discus or granny style. Um, now, however, with the four cameras, I can do full arm motions, throws if I was a pitcher in baseball, and everything just works. So again, all about immersiveness, you can now use those natural gestures you're used to doing in real life here in VR with four camera tracking. One of the questions was about the SLAM feature, which some users might not be familiar with. What uh, SLAM is, uh, it's an algorithm that stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. It's essentially why we have these cameras so that we can look at the real world and as you move around, we can keep perspective of, of motion and make sure that the world that you're in has six degrees of freedom and doesn't move. Um, so yes, absolutely, short answer. Uh, I do think uh, we have industry leading six degree of freedom, particularly with inside out tracking. We've had it you know, since we started this journey now almost a decade ago. And we've always shared you know, across our ecosystem from HoloLens to um, the VR headsets, uh, that technology. What you see here is us upgraded, right? Um, so that we go from two cameras in virtual reality, which is the case for the other Windows Mixed Reality headsets, to four. Four, by the way, is what HoloLens has, HoloLens 1 and HoloLens 2. And that does make sure not only you can track controllers more precisely, but your overall um, six degree of freedom experience becomes that much more robust as well. Now, one of the questions was, uh, does the headset allow pass-through AR? So I would not say that we have what you would consider pass-through AR, um, but we have this thing we call flashlight mode. Um, so you can punch a hole with, with your hands, essentially, with the controllers, and almost like light, illuminate wherever you're pointing, left hand, right hand, you will see it. 
um, it's not not the spot where I would consider it just yet, you know, proper pass specs, but um, this one, I would say the feature is, is flashlight mode, um, which is a step in the right direction. Sound is also a key feature in the Reverb G2, and all HP had to do for its new headset was to rely on the experience of Valve. In a previous video, we saw how spatial sound is becoming pervasive, even outside a VR environment, and you can find it at the link above. We put a lot of effort into audio. Uh, not only is the most ex important experience for immersiveness visual, but also we got hit all your senses. And if you recognize these speakers, you might say, hey, those look a lot like the, the speakers off of a Valve Index, which would be true because we've worked with Valve to take the BMR drivers and uh, associated parts and just graft them onto the Reverb G2. So if you've gotten a great audio experience with the Valve Index, you have a pretty idea of what you're getting here. Uh, these still sit about 10 millimeters off your ear, so you get a very comfortable experience with nothing touching your ears. They have great bass response. Um, and overall, throughout the entire frequency, they have great response. So as you get amazing spatial audio, so you can locate things in 3D. We have made big improvements in the ergonomics. Uh, so these fit much more comfortably in your hand for those long gaming sessions. We've also changed the control layout uh, to be more industry standard, replacing the trackpad with A, B, and X, Y buttons, as well as making the analog grip, uh, the grip into an analog button, um, rather than just a digital one or zero. Overall, between these two, uh, natural gestures have been improved immensely. Uh, generation over generation, we now feel that we are uh, a leader in your control. This opinion is also supported by Kipman. And that's where the idea for the title of this video came from. Let's listen to what Kipman had to say. And if I can advertise a little bit, um, I do have confidence because we have, you know, the stuff quite well metricated um, in terms of, of how the device actually operates. I think people will be, you know, proof is in the pudding go play with it and, and see what happens. But I'll also suggest that like, you know, one of the key, you know, uh, benefit working with with Valve uh, is their entertainment focus and their gaming focus through Steam and Steam VR. And, you know, if you know anything about gaming, turns out it's about input, right? We talk a lot about graphics on the television or the immersion, but when you're creating a game, it's about how the mechanics and making sure that you get good mechanics that make you feel um, like you're in the game, which is really about input, right? Which is in this case is about these controllers. So Valve gave a ton of feedback um, and, you know, a lot design that went into for the from the four cameras to the new controller design are really to address that, that right they have the as content providers they have the preview to kind of see the entire ecosystem all the different headsets all the different titles um, to become quite good at saying look this is the stuff that really needs to be nailed in terms of input for all of this stuff to work uh, super well and you know again I, I think their feedback was wonderful I think the collaboration was wonderful and you know, uh, very good confidence that people pleasantly surprised on how, how well these work vis-a-vis -vis, you know previous versions or you know current things in market and now on the physical comfort what is it like to wear this headset for long hours of gaming on the physical comfort uh, we have brand new magnetically attached face cushion. Uh, it actually has flexible plastic, so as you put it on your face, it, it closes around your face a little bit, um, providing a great seal against light, as well as a more comfortable fit. Um, we also have a brand new head, rear headband design. Um, we've been going through quite a few iterations with Valve on this one. Uh, and as you'll notice, it looks a lot closer to an index headband um, on the back there now. In addition, uh, we've had a focus on making sure we can easily clean these. So we've removed the front and back decorative fabric on the device from the, that we had in the first generation. And we have optional accessories for purchase that are wipeable face mask as well as rear headbands so that we can get a very cleanable device uh, for good sanitization. And finally, why a collaboration between three leading companies? HP, Microsoft, and Valve stress the importance of collaboration as a key factor to help developers and consumers. Alex Kickman, in particular, said that there's no point to have different systems targeting smaller groups, as nobody wins in this way, especially among consumers and developers. 
The three companies together represent the best value proposition today for VR, working in a very complementary way as leaders in their field. You know, I fundamentally believe, uh, you know, imagine for a minute what we could accomplish as a species if it didn't matter who got credit for it, right? I think there's so much innovation to be had. I think there is so much collaboration to be had. And there's so much strength that's, you know, uh, complementary in the ecosystem. Why compete? Right. Um, so why have us create vertically integrated products from hardware to platform to experiences to then have HP do the same thing, to then have Valve do the same thing? Nobody really wins in that world.